Welcome to Talking Movies. Uh, we are on a couch. Actually, it's a futon. Sorry. It's very comfy. Yes. Thought it, we thought we'd try something a little different. Um, again, we want to remind you to watch our, watch our friends at the Sodak Humpcast. Uh, they're funny, they swear, and they got something good to say, so check them Can out. Can we swear in here? No. Okay. We don't swear. Keep it PG-13. Family store. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blake has gotten close to swearing before, but we won't talk about that. Um, Sorry. Uh, why don't we go around the room? Last movie we saw, Blake, what do you got for us? Uh, last movie I watched was uh, Taken 2. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> oh man. Um, the only thing... You taken, now just stop sweating. The only, the only take... <laughs> <laughs> the only thing Taken 2 has taken is 90 minutes of my life. Oh. <laughs> it's terrible. But only 90 minutes, Only right? 90 minutes. That's well, what was so great about the first one. Yeah, well... Just boom, and first, there it was. There yeah, it was. I have nothing good to say about this movie. <laughs> Who are they going to take in the third movie? I, I have a... No, I have a, th I have a th <laughs> Actually, that was my theory was that it was Liam Neeson's new dog. Um, <laughs> he is a new dog. It's god-awful terrible. Um, I actually watched The Adventures of... Ford Fairlane with Enterdice Clay, and that was better than Taken Two. Um, I'm not. I, I have nothing good to say about Taken Two at all. It's terrible. Um, I also rewatched. I'm still gonna watch it. I also watched rewatched Looper, cool. which I liked less uh, than I did the first time. Unfortunately, um, I still recommend it. But <coughs> there's some cool stuff in that movie if you haven't seen it already. Swank highly recommends it. Um, I didn't care for it much the second time, but a lot of stuff, a lot of the surprises would be, are lost, I'm sure. Well, I actually, um, I actually didn't catch much of it the first time I saw it, and then the second time I actually got more of it, but the whole middle part drags for me a lot, and then it kind of just ends. So, my old recommendation for me, those are the last movies that I watched. Swank. <clears throat> yes. uh, I've been going down the line of Quentin Tarantino movies, so. Uh, I got through both Kill Bills and Glorious Bastards. And on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray, yeah. Oh, wow. 1080p. They, those movies are they're great every time. I don't find anything that I don't like about them. It's, it's hard to find anything. And I'm, not, I'm not really looking for anything, but I don't know. I can't wait till Django Unchained. Next Tuesday, Christmas Day, comes up. Um, I also have a two-part review. Uh, I'll review the first part today, and then the, the next part next week, um, the movie Ted. I fell asleep with about 40 minutes left, because obviously, you know, checking the runtime, it's an hour and 52 minutes, about Mark Wahlberg and a teddy bear, like, really, an hour and 52 minutes, come on. So, the first hour, yeah, I chuckled a couple times, but I just was... A lot of the time I was thinking, wow, do my friends and peers see a different movie? Like, what is going on? I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't find it that good. <clears throat> and then there's this whole, like, subplot with a Nora Jones concert. And it's just like, really, why get into the, the, the last act? Why are, we, why are we at a Nora Jones concert right now? I don't understand what's going on. But, and then I fell asleep. So next week I will review... So to see if the last 30 minutes <laughs> comes around, and then I can recommend it. But for now, I can't recommend the first hour of Ted. I hope nothing happens to Nora Jones. I, was, I, was I, don't know why, I don't know why she's in the movie. Other know. than she's cute. That's pretty much it. Sure. Or why that whole scene, or why that whole thing is in the movie. That's not a spoiler, it's just... I'm kind of interested now. Um, but anyway, uh... Last movie I saw was called Virginia, starring Ed Harris and Jennifer Conley. Um, also has Emma Roberts in it, which is Julia Roberts' niece. I don't remember who her father is, but anyway. Eric Roberts. Actually. Is it really? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Well, she's better an actor than her dad. But anyway. Better looking too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good movie. Uh, that you know the heavy hitters Ed and uh, Jennifer Conley, very very good. Jennifer Conley plays an emotionally disturbed person. Which you know is usually grounds for an award. I don't think she got one. I think she maybe got nominated for something. It was a couple years ago. That movie is now, but uh, um, it's just kind of a really weird, big story that just kind of had all these 
really weird twist that didn't really have a background. Um, that being said, I still kind of liked it. Um, same, same Lance Black White, is it that guy? Dustin Lance Black. Dustin Lance Black, sorry. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Uh, wrote that movie. He also wrote uh, Milk. So that's, I think this was his big follow up after that or whatever. So did he direct it too? Yeah, um, he directed this oh, he one. Yeah. yeah, he directed it. Yeah, I've never even heard of it to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. didn't I, know how I, it I think the only reason I heard of it is because Jennifer Connelly was nominated for like a Golden Globe or or something, mm -hmm. something for it, and and she was very good. And I like she's her. usually pretty. Like her anyway. And Ed Harris is a really good, kind of a. He was a sheriff, a politician, and a Mormon all at the same time. <laughs> uh, sounds like a joke. But anyway, uh, he was very good, but not nah, just kind of a weird movie. But anyway, moving on. Um, the last few I saw, uh, I saw Ted recently. Uh, I found it funny. I mean, yeah, it did get a little long at times, but I was entertained. I was probably more impressed than I thought it would be. Um, I know, one thing with Seth MacFarlane, he always has really good music in his movies, like the score, it's really good. Um, I don't know, I thought there were some funny parts, but like I said, my expectations were really low, so maybe that's why I enjoyed it more. Oh, I had, I had no expectations whatsoever. And then, uh, and then I watched The Bourne Legacy. Um, not as good as the other ones, but I had its moments, but uh, too many scenes with Ed Norton sitting in the control room saying, I need to get, get me that security camera get me get me national security I think he leaves one room the entire room no and that's you yeah and that's that's all he does throughout the whole thing and then there's like a but there's a really good chasing towards the end but the whole movie's pretty much just chasing but uh as uh, they all are yeah but yeah i give that one um i'll give my grades here in a minute and then uh a cult movie i would just watch called the forbidden zone that's uh, an Ojo boingo uh they're a band from the 80s um, Danny Elfman was in it. Um, he's actually in this movie too. <laughs> and it's just this weird little black and white movie just with their music. It's like a live action version of a 30s, 1920s, demented cartoon. Um, it's the best way I could explain it. The little guy from, uh... Where do you find this? This, what's that movie? Should I call that Island? Uh, no, that Magical Island. Fantasy Island? Fantasy Island, yeah. The little guy from oh, that. Tattoo? Yeah, the little guy, he's in that one. The plane boss, the plane. Yeah. Okay, he's he's in, but I have a forget. Yeah, and he's in it, and then uh, Danny Elfman makes a cameo. Of course he um, He sings uh, this, he's the devil in it, and he sings this song that sounds a lot like the Oogie Boogie song in Nightmare for Christmas. So it's kind of neat to see the um, progression of that. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I got that from my friend Seth Benson. Um, but uh, I'll lend it back to him. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, then I just, one thing I wanted to spotlight, it's not a movie, but it's a miniseries called Tales of the City. It stars a young Laura Linney, uh, Parker Posey's in it, and Olympia Dukakis, and a couple other people that you'll recognize. Um, it's a little six-hour miniseries from PBS from 94. It's about the 70s in San Francisco. Um, it's actually kind of bold. I was surprised it was on PBS. There's pot smoking and um pretty loose sexually and nudity but um but like the characters are all really endearing um but it's very 90s too so kind of dates a little bit with the production but uh definitely recommend it though it's kind of nice to see how laura lenny like she's such a good actress and even she's just such a natural um but yeah uh my grades i would give ted a good b um Born Legacy, I give a C plus, and then uh, Forbidden Zone, a B, a B, B plus, just for its weirdness and its, inve and its inventiveness. And uh, uh, Tales from the City, I give a good A minus. It was just a really nice mini series. A minus to a B plus, um, somewhere around there. So those are my spotlights of the week. So. I give a B minus, I think. <clears throat> yeah, I laughed but for originality. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know how they were gonna get into the whole like. I liked how they how they made him famous right away, so everyone just just accepted it. And, yeah, yeah. Because I was wondering how, was they're, how, how they're gonna get around it. Exactly. I'm kind of like, but they they make this way up where he goes into Johnny Carson, and I thought that was kind of funny. And there's there's one scene I laughed so hard at, and I was crying. I, I but the rest of it was kind of like chuckles here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, like my, the party scenes and stuff get a little long. And like I said, it if I'm falling asleep at a comedy, it's too long. My girlfriend hated it. If it's any consolation to you, she just sat there like. <laughs> but I think it has a lot to say about what the message of the movie was, especially of this generation is guys don't like to grow up like they still like love Star it's, Wars and people are still excited about Boy Meets World coming back and a lot of bros are gonna love Ted yeah yeah, yeah cause it's it's kind of their their story you know well, let's get into bros talk <laughs> next <laughs> week after I finish it uh anyway we're gonna continue our theme of actors versus each other we teased this last time so we're gonna do Robin Williams versus Dustin Hoffman um I had a cram session here about five minutes before we started um one thing i noticed is uh you know if you name me if you asked me to name 10 dustin hoffman movies in 10 or 10 movies in three minutes i don't think i could do it robin williams i think i could probably i think i could probably do 15 i just feel like dustin hoffman his name is always met with such reverence but besides you know the graduate and rain man i just don't know if he's got anything just huge you know and, well, I guess Midnight Cowboy is another big one, but... What have you done for me lately, Dustin Hoffman? Anyway. That's, that's one thing. I feel like Robin Williams' career has gotten... He's gotten better with age, yeah. where Dustin Hoffman... Who really cares about Dustin Hoffman anymore, really? Yeah, how know. many Fockers movies are they going to make? Yeah, <laughs> anybody who has anything to do with a Fokker movie, I just... Yeah, like Robert De Niro and... Robert De Niro, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Blake, so which one we start, who are we starting with? We'll start with Dustin. Dustin like, Hoffman? Oh, All right. Um, so lately, I've, I mean, I'll admit, I, I really enjoy the Kung Fu Panda movies. He voices, I think, a... The panda? No, I think he voices like, like a rat type character or something, but he's... But he's the that. master. And, uh, yes, he, yeah, he's one who trains uh, the panda. Um, also, um, a movie that kind of flew under the radar for a lot of people was Stranger Than Fiction with Will Ferrell. Mm, where yeah. he, he's in that for a little bit. He's really good in that. He is um, really good in that. I Heart Huckabees, he's good I was in that one. I, um, I have a lot. I, I can, yeah. We can go on sure. and come back. Well, I don't um, necessarily like, have anything against him. I feel like he's usually very good in everything he does, but he's never like, he's never been, at least in the last 10, 15 years, yeah. he hasn't been the guy yeah. in the movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I he's always really, been I wanna, the I professor. I want to say he's kind of like gone back to like a lot of theater and like raising his, I think he has a lot of kids, so he's like kind of. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's bigger than like too. Yeah, yeah. So I, I noticed when I was looking at his filmography in the eighties, he did like five movies, hmm. which really, which really surprised me, um, since he was kind of big in the seventies. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why. I'm sure there is too. Yeah. I think with a lot of men in that generation, though, like as they get older, they can't find the, quite the roles. Like Al Pacino and De Niro, I think it's a prime example. Like. The two titans now they're kind of like in supporting roles now and yeah just comes they're, they're kind of titans yeah. too yeah where and then it's funny because then you look at Meryl Streep who she was always kind of like the side and now she's the lead you know mm -hmm. of that generation but yeah and I think just yeah it's just stuff that comes with age and but I feel like Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman aren't that far off, far off from one another from mm -hmm. no ten years no uh, yeah I think Dustin Hoffman goes hard. Start in the early '60s. Robin Williams is like mid '70s. Yeah, and he did a lot of TV first. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Um, one Dustin Hoffman movie that I love is called Marathon Man. I haven't seen that. Um, where he plays, uh, well, he runs marathons, but uh, he plays, he plays this guy whose older brother happens to uncover uh, this this Nazi secret, and then all of a sudden he's got all these Nazis chasing him. It's, it takes place in the '70s, and um, it's it's very infamous for a torture scene. Um, if you've ever heard it, everyone say, is it safe? Mm. Is it safe? They're referencing that movie. Mm -hmm. um, people who have seen the movie know what I'm talking about. But that's that's a, a gem that's missed that quite a bit. That's animated series. But anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. That's on my list. <laughs> yeah. So that's a movie that I really like. And of course, Midnight Cowboy is really good mm -hmm. as well. Which he won him the Oscar, right? Mm. You no. Know. He didn't win? For that? I think the, other guy, I think the other guy maybe won. John Boy won. Yeah. Actually, Midnight Cowboy is still pretty... I don't still, know. It's still far out there, right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty, like, way ahead of its time. And it's a pretty... Kind of gigolo. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty well-referenced movie, too. Um, you know, obviously, the, the big ones, Kramer versus Kramer, Midnight Cowboy, Graduate. Um, we have a bit of a 
peculiarity here with uh, both of our actors actually being cross-dressers in movies. Um, Tootsie. Uh, Rain Man is another big one, and uh, Wag the Dog is probably the favorite, my favorite movie that, that, I, that, I, know, that I like Dustin Hoffman in. Probably, um, I just feel like, you know, him as opposed to Robin Williams, and we'll get to him in a second, it just seems like, you know, you say like stuff like I Heart Huckabees and Kung Fu Panda, and there's other stuff like Stranger Than Fiction. I've seen all those movies, but when I think of those movies, I don't think of Dustin Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams, when he's in a movie, you know he's in a movie. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Um, I think my favorite performance from, from Hoffman is, is Straw Dogs, the Sam Peckinpah movie from mm -hmm. the 70s. Very intense one. Um, it's, it's, which actually got a really good remake, in my opinion. Um, really? Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Um, he plays like this mathematician who's kind of a weak person, and um, he's having... He, he moves back to England with his wife, who's from England, and he, uh, they begin to have work done on their house, and the guys who are doing the work end up raping his wife, and so it kind of pushes him to stand up to be a man uh, at the end, and it turns very violent in the last half hour. If you haven't seen it, I, I really recommend it, and it's, and it's remake, too. Um, and, of course, All the President's Men is really good as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's another one you forget about. Yeah. Seems like his his peak was definitely a long time ago, as opposed yeah. to, I think, Robin Williams. He, he just doesn't... I don't say he's peaky now, but he just never has seemed to fade away. Mm -hmm. You know? I really like Dustin Hoffman's voice, so compared to Robin Williams, he just has a really great narrating voice, um, his speeches. I liked Outbreak. <laughs> It's a fun too, yeah. 90s, you know, movie. Um, and everybody it's it's a fun thriller. Uh, um, I think it was actually the one redeeming thing in Messenger, the story of John of Arc. Movie he I liked that, wasn't he? I liked that movie a lot when I was a teenager, and I just thought his scenes were really good. He was just this conscious, um, questioning, her inner monologue, pretty much. He also did a movie uh, by Tom Tickbird uh, called Perfume. I've heard that where, where the guy kills people and takes their scents to make perfume. Yeah. Perfume. I I recommend that one. That that's, I've heard it's that's really a good. really good movie. And the, and the, the last twenty that's minutes the, are gonna blow your heart. They blow your mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're never you're there's, gonna see stuff that you're like. There's oh two my movies God. called Perfume. I think yeah, I Perfume Story of a Murderer or something. Alan Rickman. Yeah, I think so. I, I haven't seen it for years. I just remember like the last fifteen minutes. I was like, holy crap, this is insane. <laughs> Um, another movie that popped in my head just now is, and I haven't seen it for quite a while, and I'd have to look up a synopsis to tell you more about it. It's called Papillion. It's got Dustin Hoffman and Stephen Queen. Have you seen that? I've Are not they, seen it, but like, I, I've I always wanted to. I'm pretty sure they're like in a prison camp, or they're, it's some kind of military prison yeah. type of issue, and it's kind of almost kind of like you know, Great Escape. They're trying to break out, and the brains and the brawn type of thing. It's just kind of a cool... It's, I wouldn't call it like a buddy movie, but it's just kind of an interesting hmm. mix of the, those two, you know, with Dustin Hoffman, who certainly everybody, but he can tell you something about now and, and with an acting legend like that and Steve McQueen. So. Legend in my mind, anyway. Uh, moving on, anybody, any more thoughts about Dustin Hoffman? Uh, we can do the tie-in movie. Hook. Oh, yes. He cool. plays Captain Hook. Segue. With Robin Williams as Peter Pan. I like that movie. Oh, I did too. It's a nice, it's fun, a magic movie. movie. It is a yeah. magical movie, isn't it? <clears throat> I've watched that in the last couple of years, and I enjoyed it. So the whole time? I haven't seen it since maybe college or something. But... I think that's now on Blu-ray. It is? Mm -hmm. It's funny. When I think of Gus and Hoffman, I never think of Hook. That's how good I is. never think of Hook. <laughs> or him as Hook, I should yeah. say. And then Bob Hopskin. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's... And then Glenn Close makes a little appearance, too. Oh, God. And that's Ooh. where I remember Maggie Smith. Who does? Glenn Close. Yeah. She's the one that gets the scorpions in the in the chest. She plays a pirate. Oh. Yeah, she's in drag. <laughs> and then Maggie Funny. Smith, that's like the first movie I remember her in. Okay. Um, Robin Williams was in Mrs. Doubtfire, which is a remake of Tootsie. Oh. <laughs> which is, you know, why they're both cross-dressing. <laughs> <laughs> they're both wildly successful and popular movies. They are, aren't they? I still haven't seen Tootsie, though. Yeah, but I, I have not seen have Tootsie. Have you seen Tootsie? I have. We discussed this afterwards, showing my age. But yes, I've seen. Tootsie. It's funny. I think it's funny. It's kind of. It's always kind of one of those movies. Nothing against my parents, but I think I watched a lot of movies at a, at an age I maybe wasn't supposed to. And I think I kind of there's a lot of questions involved after I watched that movie for the first time. But it's still funny. I mean, I laughed. It's just like 
why is he dressing up like a woman? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I should watch it, though. It's somebody's really well-received and... Yeah, and, a classic and, in the comedy world. Yeah, and Dustin Hoffman just, just does it so well. I, I would say I'd like Tootsie better than Miss Doubtfire. I think Miss Doubtfire kind of just... I don't know. just kind of blew up for some reason. I, and I just didn't think it was... <laughs> I think it was all that. Um, so, uh, I guess we should... Moving on. Mork and Mindy, anyone? Uh, <laughs> Start a little course. bit really nervous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen a couple of episodes. I've seen a couple of episodes Mindy. here and there. Um, <clears throat> Nana, Nana. He had a, I think that was his severe... Coke problem during that <laughs> during that time, so maybe it's a wonder he's still with us. But anyway, I didn't mean to bring the room down. Um, some other good ones, uh, Insomnia. I know we've talked about that movie here before. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of my favorite ones with him in it. I guess. When he, yeah, when he plays a, but he can play a villain role really yeah. well. That and one hour photo. Wow, yeah, I mean, one hour he's, ter- he's terrifying. He is. <clears throat> yeah, but then he can go and do a movie like Google Hunting or Jack. Google Hunting is one of my <laughs> one of my favorite Robin Williams roles. I think he's mm-hmm. unbelievable in that movie. Really yeah, good. yeah, I do. I do really like him, but it kind of seemed like it was the same type of character as he was in Dead Poet Society. You know, just kind of the support, what he means. the yeah the supportive teacher type of thing. So I mean, I certainly I mean nothing against Google Hunting. Yeah, I just didn't feel like that was a big of a stretch for Robin Williams. I felt like yeah, when he can grow his beard, when yeah. he can harness his energy, you know. Instead of, and I think what he gets a lot of bad rap is the movies that he's like the zaniest and yeah. like Aladdin or This Is Got Fire or um, Father's Day or you know stuff like that where he's yeah, like just all over the map. But I mean that's kind of his thing trademark too though. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's a great performer though. I mean he can really get into it. I. Th- I know a lot of people don't like this movie, but World's Greatest Dad. I love that I movie. Just, I, I actually just watched it. I just watched that. And it's a really good performance by him. And it's a really dark look at parenthood. Very dark. <laughs> but uh, he's really good in that one too. Uh, one of my favorite movies from my from my childhood is is probably one of his worst movies, um, Toys. I have a weird life. I of that I, movie. I like Toys um, for how visually awfully visually st- stimulating good it is. But it's it's a terrible movie looking back at it. But there's something about watching a, a, this guy play a toy factory as a kid. You know, there's something about how weird it is. And like, then they have like these buildings out in the middle of a cornfield that they they, they make right there. And really yeah. really bizarre movie. But, oh, Cool J's in that by the way. Yeah. Um, and then there's like this all this whole weird like war thing going yeah. on. Yeah. It gets really dark, and, and there's, there's a battle. There's, there's kids toys. that are that are playing video games that are actually machines somewhere around the world killing real people or something. It's it's Sounds a it's intense, a intense, man. You haven't seen it? No. Oh man, it's terribly good. Yeah, it's it's worth a watch. Yeah. I I say it is. I think Barry Sonnen. Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Didn't Barry Levinson do Man of the Year too? Yeah. yeah, and he's also and did Wag the Dog. And Wag the, the Dog. Oh, yeah. Barry Levinson? Yeah. yeah. Diner. And Another time. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Sphere with Dustin I, Hoffman. Oh, man. It's just the connection's <laughs> all over today. Wow. Yeah. Um, another another crazy time. Wasn't Dustin Hoffman in that Mr. Megorium's Wonder? Yes. Yeah. Dustin Hoffman? That movie's terrible. I never saw that. <laughs> um, but anyway. It's, uh... Just like with the kooky. Terry Gilliam is Robin Williams in the Fisher King. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I've never seen that movie. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Not one of Gilliam's best, I'd say. But <clears throat> what about Robin Williams? He's good. Yeah, yeah. he's good in it. Other wacky, sure. zany homo. Oh, and if you you, I mean, if it's your thing, he's completely naked in it for parts oh. of the movie. So. Wow. Well, you know, and, you know the wacky zany. That's who he is. I mean, you look at you look at like some of my favorite. Uh, and I don't want to get a subject here, but some of my favorite Nicolas Cage movies are like Matchstick Man and The Weather Man. Because he's just plain, I think, who he is. You know what I mean? And that's why those movies are so effective. I think he's a weird guy in real life. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see him like on Letterman or something. He is just like all yeah. over the place. He I can't mean, sit down. He's, didn't he he's buy the a hyper in Germany just for the hell of it? Basically. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. He probably just runs around it. I love like Nicolas Cage. Uh, that's a whole other show, yeah. I think. But, we'll get to him. Yeah. Dave will need to be here for that one. Um, yes. Couple other Johnny Come Lightly's though that I enjoyed. Uh, RV. It's got Cheryl, <laughs> Cheryl Hines in it. It's a very sound film. I watched. I watched it with 
with my mom one that weekend. It's it's just a funny movie. I mean, if you've ever had a horrible family vacation with siblings and your parents, I mean, you could relate to that movie. It's just good. Uh, Patch Adams. I, um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed it. I have some issues with that movie, but I enjoyed that movie. Sappy, I think, for me. But yeah. Um, kind of sappy, but what dreams may come is is interesting. I never saw that one. Uh, I don't know how good it holds up now, but when it first came out, it was pretty astounding. Um, he was like walking around in like pictures, which is heaven. His version of heaven, and then like Max Max von Sydow, which is fitting because it has very Bergman esque qualities. Um, they go into hell and it's just it's really gorgeously beautiful. But I don't know how well the graphics still hold up. But Robin Williams, is in there. it's a nice performance about his family and. They keep getting hit by tragedy with death, and um, I don't know it's, it's it's interesting. It's definitely worth a watch. I feel. Has anyone seen Bines- Bicentennial Man? Mm-mm. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have not done very much homework for this episode. <clears throat> that was strangely reminiscent when they asked on The Simpsons, "Have anybody seen that movie Tron?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you know. I think about it, these guys have both done very good kids movies in the, in the recent years, you know, that's kind of one thing that's cool is, you know, our kids may not know who they are, my kids I should say, um, may not know who they are exactly, but they've certainly made a made a mark on their life with, you know, uh, Robin Williams is uh, in both the Night at the Museum movies, that's which, right, he, is, isn't he? Uh, he plays Teddy Roosevelt, my son loves those movies, um, you know, Dustin Hoff did the Kung Fu Panda. Um, another another good kids movie that's kind of a little on the intense side is Jumanji. I really like oh, that yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, I really like that movie too. Which <laughs> apparently they're talking about remaking. Oh gosh. Well, we can get into that. Three D. <laughs> um, IMAX too, by the way. Yeah. But yeah, I just Nolan. it's it's cool to see that those guys, you know, they don't feel like that stuff is beneath them. You know, of course. Obviously. I think they're kind of kids at heart. If you ever see yeah. movies with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet. Robin Williams loves doing cartoon uh, no. kids movies. He's got to love it. No way. <laughs> well, and we also mentioned mentioned Aladdin earlier. Uh, he's good in Aladdin. Yeah, first, no, he's great in Aladdin. The first Aladdin is so awesome. I, that's probably one of my favorite kids movies. Wait a second. They made such a huge mistake by giving Dan Kessel another that voice in the second one. Who? Glad they brought Robin Williams. The guy that is Homer Simpson's voice was uh, the voice of the genie uh, in the second Aladdin uh, movie. I, th- I think no offense a- against him. I, I think Aladdin him. was like the first movie where they really wanted to push uh, like a like a uh, an Oscar nomination for animated voicing because he I mean everyone loved him in it. And, oh, he's awesome. Um, I think the next person that they did was Ellen DeGeneres, and Finding Nemo was another one they pushed. But but I think Robin Williams was the first person to to voice an animated movie where like he needs to be recognized for this. And uh-huh. He's fantastic. Yeah, he did he not get not? I thought he no. No. They don't yeah. do that. What, uh, don't. Isn't he another? Um, is he in Fern Gully? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. He's, He's the, the bat. bat. He's the bat. <clears throat> Who's good? Isn't that Batty, I think, actually. <laughs> it would be, ironically. Uh, another one that's going to be construed as a kid's movie that's kind of out there is Popeye. I've never seen that. Um, Obviously, I've seen more Robin Williams movies than Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Maybe his catalog is just bigger. I'll yeah. actually defend Popeye. I think it's actually a good movie. <laughs> it's funny. Robert Altman? Yeah, it's a it's a very bizarre movie, but I loved it when I was a kid. There's just really good songs by um, Harry Nelson uh, from Nelson Schmelson, um, and like Shelley Duvall's was born to play Olive, um, and yeah, it's just this really kooky movie. But uh, yeah, one of Ron Williams' early movies. It's pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, movie that got lost in our political movie discussion is Man of the Year. It's a recent. Recent political movie about Robin Williams running for office, and I, I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a li- little bit more intense than I thought it was going to be. You know, you just kind of see Robin Williams in a movie kind of like that. You think it's going to be kind of a, of a spoof comedy type of thing, but uh, it's really, it's really interesting. It's kind of a, kind of one of those political movies that puts everybody's morals in question and just kind of puts stuff out there. So, hmm. I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that one. Um, another, another little weird role. Um, that I that I really enjoyed the movie was uh, House of D. He played a, a mentally challenged person, I guess you would say. Um, it's uh, I think it was written and directed by Daniel uh, David Duchovny. Um, that's a really good movie. It's an interesting, interesting story. You know, it's not uh, 
not the most happy of movies, but it's it's a movie that I certainly enjoyed, and he's he's very good in it. I think he has that that versatility to him. Uh, I suppose I guess you could say Dustin Hoffman played a mentally handicapped person in Rain Man. You know, however you feel about that movie. And Dick he, Tracy. Yeah. And the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Mumbles McQueen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, both uh, both good movies. I I really like Rain Man. I know. I think he didn't he win an award for that. Yeah, that's kind of where that. You play somebody mentally challenged, you can win I actually think Tom Cruise is think. better in that movie than, than Dustin Hoffman. I think it carries the movie more. In, in my opinion, I, I really like Tom Cruise in that movie. But Dustin Hoffman's only Oscar? Yeah, I think so. And Robin Williams has one Oscar. Yeah. For Global Hunting? Yeah. But they all have won. They're nominated several times. Several times. Yeah. yeah. So we have a... A, a conclusion? Yeah, yeah we kind of say with stalemate, because... I like Robin Williams' movies as a great performer, but then, I don't know, he has more, more bad stuff, like his bad stuff is like really bad, but then like, does sound is a little more selective, I mean, he's made some bad movies too, like every actor, but I mean, he's not as, I would say, versatile as Robin though, or as more varied, I would say, from projects, but, mm -hmm. um... I think they're both pretty versatile, but I do agree that Dustin Hoffman is probably definitely more selective. Mm -hmm. I feel like, well... And they're, and they're both different performances, you know. Yeah. Robin is a stand-up to do a one-man show, where Dustin's an actor ensemble, you know. Like, he could be Willie, Willie Loman in Death of a Salesman mm -hmm. um, easily, but... Yeah, you know, and I think I would say Robin Williams is definitely more versatile. I'm not exactly sure what I just said before that, so I might be contradicting myself. But I feel like there's more, there's more things Dustin Hoffman can do on the serious level than that Robin Williams could. I mean, there's certainly different things that Robin Williams could do. But I think if you want to, you know, Robin, Dustin Hoffman can be. I think he can be the 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 bad boss, or you know, the political leader or something. I think he could just do some more stuff seriously than Robin Williams could could pull off anyways. Yeah. Horrible bosses too. I like to see him in it. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other thoughts? No, I, I mean I guess my thought was on Dustin Hoffman. I think he's just made his movies are just better overall. Yeah. He's more classic. Stand the test of time on. Yeah, he has more classics in his canon than Robin Williams does. Not to take anything Sure. From Robin Williams, I really enjoy his movies too. But both good actors. When I think of better actors, I, I mean, I guess I would say Dustin Hoffman is, is my pick. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas. Um, this has been Talking Movies. We are Division of Metal Fraker Productions, and once again, make sure you check out our friends, the Sodak Comcast. They're funny. See ya. Bye.